So my talk actually has three titles and I couldn't decide on them. I've gone for the end with this one because then it makes you think it's the end, but it's not. Whoa, tricks. But I've also gone for a game over in the actual talk. So pretend it's that if you like that title more. I don't know. Um, because this talk is about endings, I've been thinking about endings and I've been thinking about death because death is an ending. And then I found out that someone I know died and then it made it kind of sad. So I'm going to dedicate it to my history teacher who died this week. And it's very sad. However, she also wouldn't understand what I'm talking about. So don't get too sad. It's okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so I think about death a lot. Not in an emo way, though when I was 13 it certainly was, with uh, regrettable hair dye jobs and safety pins as a fashion accessory. Not that they're not anymore. Anyone who is wearing safety pins, they're great. Rock on. I haven't really experienced death yet, obviously. But also in the sense that I've never actually lost anyone that I know, so I don't really know what to expect. So I think about it. I think about what it feels like to have your brain switched off. And... Uh, I realise I haven't been clicking through. That, that's the one about me being emo. There you go. Enjoy that for a bit. Oh my god, it moves. <laughs> this is why I had to... <laughs> so uh, I think about what it feels like to have your brain switched off. And I imagine it doing that blinking out thing that CRT TVs do. I imagine it being like slowly drifting off to sleep, like when you've taken a particularly strong sleeping bill and maybe a little bit of alcohol. Please don't try that at home. Then I imagine all my friends and family decaying like the Melty Man in Indiana Jones and the Holy Grail and, and that's usually where I stop. Because that's... yeah. Endings in games are strange little things. It's, it's not like a film where you know roughly when the thing will end. It's not like a book where you cradle the finale in your palm the whole way through, slowly approaching it at the, as the pages dwindle. A game, at least in the sense of sprawling 3D worlds with non-linear narratives, is more like life. It just sort of meanders towards the end and you only know you're there when it prompts you to create a final tactical save point. So maybe not all that much like life. Uh, but most people don't know when they're going to snuff it till the last chapter. Illness looms on the horizon like Bowser's castle. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. The shadow of death looking an awful lot like a mutant turtle dinosaur hybrid ready to jump on your head, proverbially. So do games prepare us for life's endings? I mean, looking at my own experiences, I'd say not, but that's because I find them just as difficult to come to terms with as the big sleep. Or maybe it's just because I really hate boss battles. <laughs> boss battles feel like lazy game design to me, like the video game equivalent of saying it was all a dream or making the scatterbrained gal fall for the emotionally unavailable man. I'm not saying we should all make games adhere to a real-life narrative. I just don't think many of us equate boss with hulking hybrid creature with three forms and an arsenal of incendiary ammunition rather than, like, you know, person who makes sure I have a job. <coughs> Unless you work in, like, that sort of place. I don't, I don't know. It's not that they are lazy game design, really. Like, they're more of a hangover from retro gaming days where boss battles were a milestone a marker for how far you'd go. Think Link in a dungeon. Wait, I don't know if this is the next slide. Yeah! <laughs> you know when you're at the end because the gate slams shut behind you and that, that music starts playing. It's exciting, it's tense, it's a recognisable trope that makes you all tingly inside. But it's also an incredibly frustrating and sometimes incongruous mechanic, especially if you've been using smarts to get through a puzzle-filled dungeon, only to have your final test be how hard can you hit the thing. We don't tend to get to the end of our lives or even the end of our time in a certain country, job, or house, and face some kind of huge obstacle that we can defeat to prove the world that we're ready to move on, apart from exams. <laughs> and I challenge anyone here to tell me that exams are a good test of everything you've achieved up till that moment in time. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, exactly. Ha! <laughs> Boss fights test your stamina and your ability to read patterns. Exams? Test your skill in memorising arbitrary facts and your ability to write really, really tiny answers on your skirt lining. My boss saw me looking at this and I got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Both are inadequate. Both are unsatisfactory endings that have little to do with you as a person and everything to do with box ticking. You have to defeat Ganondorf. Of course you do. You can't just collect a bunch of heart pieces and like hide from responsibility. But both are necessary because they're the only real test we have. But now some games are starting to explore different, subversive endings. 
The Witcher 3 has, if anyone's played it, traumatic, unresolved and unfulfilling endings to certain quests, like when a rom-com ends with, oh, then they split up, I don't know. <laughs> Fire Emblem has your characters mumbling their last words to you as they die in battle so that you may live. Has anyone played that one? Yeah. So sad. <laughs> Sometimes endings happen that suck. Not because they're badly written, but because we don't get closure. No princess, no big magic sword, just things, things that happen and we don't like them and it sucks. It's my long held belief that the games industry fosters the most entitled fan base. <laughs> and that's because we boot up a game and it teaches us a lesson like you are always the most important person in the world. And if at first you don't succeed, save scan because you deserve to win. Games have a definitive narrative from Mario to Mass Effect. Everything ro revolves around you. Parts of the game literally don't exist until they're loaded in for your majesty. I'm just gonna see what the next slide is. It's that, I don't know what that's supposed to be. And that's a bit scary, really. Are we a generation of people who can't accept endings? We sometimes seem to have so little respect for the designer's creative vision over our own satisfaction, that we will literally campaign for certain en endings to be changed. Sure, some are terrible and rushed, and others the result of funding running out, or designers getting uh, unceremoniously fired. I mean, sent on holiday. <coughs> yeah. But just because Gone Home doesn't end with the revelation that you've been dead the whole time, and Life is Strange doesn't end with the spontaneous combustion of all hipsters, that doesn't necessarily mean it's <laughs> like a bad or wrong ending. Sometimes, there are endings we look forward to. The end of a bad relationship, the finale of a good show, and of course, Christmas. Did you know it's nearly Christmas? <laughs> Bono told me to check. So. <laughs> 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 so too do games have endings we enjoy. Finally completing a hard as balls level, getting to lick that delicious Triforce cake. That's not the Triforce cake. That makes me sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. I guess some people still have fantasies about that big word. Samus gets a kid off, each to their own. So putting aside all that gamers are entitled thing, just for a second at least, some endings make us all fuzzy inside, like an inside out dog. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that picture exist? <laughs> I literally searched for inside out dog and it was like, yeah, all right. Thank you, Google. <laughs> If you've played Red Dead Redemption, Bioshock Infinite, Journey, The Wind Waker, and a multitude of other gorgeously crafted games, you'll know about bittersweet endings too. The way I felt at the end of Bioshock Infinite had me thinking for days, not in just the, like, what does any of this mean way, but also in the sort of gently shell-shocked way you feel when something surprises you. Sure, we've been raised on winning, but games are changing to accommodate life. Games like not by a shock internet. <laughs> that Dragon Cancer, which starts with finding out that your son, your five year old child, is going to die. Imagine finding out the ending at the beginning of anything else. Or her story, which is told in a non linear and player driven way, which stops whenever you want it to, when you think you understand. Making a game means taking control of your own narrative, but it, sometimes it means submitting to one that already exists. But really, an ending isn't a huge statement. It's just a thing that sort of happens because you've done everything else and it's the last thing to do. 2015 will end because it's winter and everything dies, but it gets reborn again in spring. Your beloved video games end, but you can replay them again. Family and friends leave, but you meet more. You make more. Endings are just part of a cycle, the illusion of a finish line to make everything seem neat and contained. And if there's one thing to take away from this talk, it's that sometimes an ending is just a bit when you run out of time. Bye.